Hey guys, so we have our video clip right here. And the first thing we're going to do is to stabilize it. This will take out the shakiness that is inherent in the video. And it's just going to make it much easier for us to work with down the road. All right, the next thing we're going to do is to turn our stabilized clip here into a compound clip. And then we're going to find the frame where we want to turn our subject here into smoke. And once that's determined, let's just go ahead and hit freeze frame. This is going to create, as you can see, a new clip here for us. And this clip here can be shortened or lengthened. But the key takeaway is that now we can take advantage of this new clip. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, take it uh, directly to the Fusion page. Once we're on the Fusion page, the first thing we're going to do is to bring in a matte control node. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and bring in an additional one. And then let's also bring in a polygon masking node because we're going to go ahead and create a mask around our subject here. I'm not going to be very precise and just going to create a very rough outline around her. And then let's go ahead and connect polygon masking node to the garbage matte input of the matte control node and let's do the same for the other one as well and let's also not to forget to connect media in one to this other matte control node so at this point if we look at both matte control nodes they look exactly the same but for this other one what we can do is to come to garbage matte and hit invert so that we will only see the subject and if we bring in a merge node and we connect this other matte control as a foreground what's going to happen is that we're now getting pretty much exactly the same image but the key difference here is that we can now isolate this subject and this is going to be where we're going to be spending a lot of the time later on creating that smoke effect but before we jump into that you're going to notice when we move this subject around the background is going to be exposed and that's not looking good so we have to figure out a way to fix this so let's come to media pool and let's bring in that compound clip that we just created earlier. Let's also bring in a merge node uh, as well. And if we just look at media into right now, you're going to see the clip that we just created earlier, which looks great. But we have to figure out which frame we want to use to fill that background. So once that's determined, then let's come back to effect and bring in time stretch node. And then under the source time parameter, what we're going to do is to write that frame down, which is a 58th in this case. So now, as you can see throughout this entire clip, all we're seeing is just the 58th frame. OK, so let's connect this now to merge node and then let's switch the foreground and the background so that this is now going to be the background. And now if we have a look at the final output, you're going to see that we are not going to see that exposed background no matter where our subject is. Now, this step is optional because in your scenario, you may not even need to do this. But what I'm going to do here is to bring a paint node and just try to blend this background into the foreground a little bit better. Uh, you absolutely, once again, do not have to do this, uh, but it's just me being a stickler about it because I want to make this background look a little bit more natural. But at this point, guys, we are pretty much ready to create the smoke effect. As we mentioned earlier, the foreground is going to be where all the magic happens. So let's disconnect it from the merge node. And instead, let's bring in image emitter node as well as the render node. The render node is going to ensure that our particle system is going to work. And then let's connect this render node back to the merge node as a foreground. And then let's connect the matte control node to the image emitter node. Then in the image emitter node, we're going to go to region and then change it to bitmap. Now let's connect the matte control node once again, but to the bitmap input of the image emitter node. So now, as you can see, our subject is represented by particles. So the first thing we're going to do is to come to image emitter and then bump up the X density as well as the Y density to about three. And then we're going to come to style tab and change it from point to blob. So this, as you can see, is going to represent this image much better. Now let's also pull up fade controls and bump up fade out quite a bit there. And we're also going to uh, add a turbulence node now in between image emitter and render. This is going to give the particles some movement. 
So let's change X strength as well as Y strength a little bit. And then let's also bump up the density parameter to about 41. So we're actually getting pretty close at this point. Uh, the next thing we need to do is just to change the strength over life. Uh, and then we're also going to come back to image emitter. We're going to change velocity, bring that up just a little bit. And at this point, guys, this is looking pretty good. So at this point, we're just going to build on what we have right now and elevate it to get to our smoke effect. So the next thing we're going to do is to add a directional force node, and we're going to place it in between turbulence and render. This will give us some additional movement. And then the first thing we're going to do here is to change strength down to zero, and then let's just bring it down. And then we're going to continue to change this parameter as it goes until it is to our liking. So just bring that up a bit. Okay, so this is looking much better. We're going to stick with this. And then the next thing we're going to do is to add in a blur node, and we're going to place it right on top of render. So the idea of the blur node is to make our particles more blurry and that's going to kind of form that smoky look okay so let's bring up blur size but not too much uh, so i think three is good enough in this case and then we're going to bring a erode and dilate node and now the idea of this node is to really kind of allow us to focus on the edges of the smoke uh, so uh, what we're going to do here is to change the amount and then change the filter as well but uh, we, as we change the amount, uh, it's not going to be enough. So what we have to do is to bring in a sharpen node and then connect the erode node to it. So these two nodes, as you can see now, is going to work hand in hand to really help us isolate the edges of the smoke and help kind of bring that up, really accentuate it. And ultimately, the idea is that this is we're going to connect this back to the blur node so let's just change the sharpen and erode once that is done let's bring a merge and then connect sharpen to it so now as you can see this is looking way much better and then we're going to change the apply mode as well from normal to something like screen uh, so this will further elevate this effect we can also bring a soft glow node and place it on top of the merge node and then bring down the gain uh, parameters a bit there so yeah, guys, at this point, this effect is looking pretty decent. We're pretty close to wrapping up this effect. One last thing we can do is to come to the render node and change pre-generate frames to something like 10. So this will make the effect start actually at the 10th frame. So if this is something that you want, you can definitely do that, but you don't have to do that. Let's come to the edit page now. Let's just let this render. And uh, yeah, guys, so this is our final look. So it's looking really good. But of course, we're not finished. Uh, the next thing I want to do is to kind of show you guys how we can change some of these parameters to get a slightly different look. So let's jump back in to the Fusion page. The first node we're going to focus on here is the Turbulence node. So let's change up the X Strength parameter. Let's also change the Density parameter as well to see how this is going to affect the look. We're also going to come back to Image Emitter, uh, change the X Density and Y Density uh, up to 4. Uh, and also we're going to go to Erode as well as Sharpen uh, to see how changing these parameters can help us uh, better kind of bring out the edges of the smoke effect but guys this is really up to you to experiment and to see you know what parameters you want to change to get to the effect that you want so now let's come back to the edit page let this render and this is pretty much it guys this is a slightly different look but uh, it's also looking pretty good so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial as always i will see you next time <music>